Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. I'm so honored and excited to have my dear friend back on the show. This is Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero. She is District 4 uh, and she is coming up for re-election, but we're really going to learn about her journey, uh, learn what it's like to be a commissioner, talk a little bit about why she's running. And of course, we want to talk about what we have to look forward to in the next four years. Welcome back, Commissioner. How are you today? Thank you, Ted. I am fine. Thank you again. And thank you to all of those people that are um, watching this video. Um, thank you for, you know, always being there for your show as well. And I'm so happy to always see you doing this. I'm always so happy to see you. I love it when I actually go to a, an event in person and I get to see you. Uh, you really are, as we talked about before we went live, you are everywhere. I mean, I thought I was everywhere, but Ooh, you are everywhere. Um, and we'll talk about that too, but let's give them a little journey. Let's give them a background, sort of how you got from what you were doing prior to being an elected official to uh, the time where you got elected. Thank you. So like I said before, um, in, in 2018, remember when you interviewed me, uh, I was, and I am still a mental health um, therapist with um, families and children and also marriage. And um, that was before I was here uh, as a commissioner, but I worked um, 15 years with the Department of Children and Family, uh, CHS, as um, uh, when they privatized, and I was a supervisor in dependency unit. And that was a very passionate moment of my life where I was able to connect the families with the different resources in the community and reunify the kids with the with the parents. And I love it. And then I finished my master's degree in, in mental health. And then I love it too. And I continue loving it. And now, um, well, in 2018, I actually, I ran in 2014 and I didn't made it. Then I was appointed for, to the CRC which is the Shadow, Shadow Review Commission. And there I learned all the process and everything that the county, you know, deals with and how it works and the local government. And then I, you know, ran again in 2018 and then I made it. This are the four years that uh, has not been easy, you know, um, Ted. And I think we talk, you know, in different times when we see each other about how COVID, you know, the pandemic. Yes. Here, and then um, we couldn't you know, do a lot of things. And, you know, I'm always doing events for the people, food drive, back to schools, the three kings. And, and you know, I always talk to you about all those stuff. And, and I love it. I like to be with the community. And so, but that whole, you know, year and a half, two years, you know, step us back because of COVID. And not that it's gone. We still have to be careful. You see how, you know, the numbers are coming up. But we still have to be careful. I mean, uh, but yeah, that's what I love. I do it with passion. I love what I do as a commissioner. Uh, and people know because that's what I like. I like that contact with the community. And I said since the beginning, I will be a listener. And that's what I've been doing. I will always listen to the community and to the residents before I make any decision up here in BCC. And they know that because that's why I do a lot of um, community meetings because I want them to know what's going on around in the area so that way they I can have the feedback and know and negotiate just yes. for them um, with the developers so they can get you know things that we have in you know we fighting for we don't have like roads you know and, and, and widening and, and, and runabouts and lights and all of that you, so you that, have done such amazing work I mean, I follow you, obviously, because we're friends and I'm so excited for you. But I always like to ask this for anybody who uh, becomes an elected official. Why? Why at that time? Why did you decide that you wanted to? Because it's one thing to volunteer. It's one thing to be appointed to a committee. You know, I've been on the mayor's academy, which was amazing. But to actually take that step where you're putting yourself and your family on display uh, in order to be an elected official. What was the driving force behind that? What made you want to do that? Well, I, I wasn't paying attention to anything in government. I, I have to say it. I mean, I was working very hard uh, when I was in the department and also when I was doing mental health. I mean, but there, I'm very active in the community and the Hispanic community as well. And the Hispanic community all get together, the leaders and so on. They you know, decided that they needed a leader in the local government to also, you know, advocate for them as well. So they were looking and in one meeting, they asked me if, if 
if I, you know, what I, what I do or, or what, what it is, you know, my future, my goals. And I said, well, I here to serve the community and the people, and that's what I'm going to continue doing. And that's when everything start, you know, they requested, oh, well, we would like to help you with this. And <laughs> if you will run. And I said, me run for commissioner, for governor, well, you know, but then I, you know, I start praying. I said, you know, let me, let me pray. Let's see what happens. I'm a, a woman of faith and everybody knows that. And well, and that's how I became the commissioner in 2018. And I have Amazing. come to it, it, it's I think it's bravo to you because I think it takes a very special soul to be an elected official, to be any kind of public servant, uh, because you really are giving up a lot in order to do that. It's not like being a public servant makes you a millionaire. So all of your time uh, that you devote uh, is because of your passion. And let's talk about your district. Uh, district four, give people an idea of what district four covers, because it's pretty ginormous. Yes, it's very big. Actually, in District One and District Four, are the biggest in in the county, and um, and that's why. Well, when we, you know, it was redistrict, so I they took they had to take out from District Four um, because of population and geographically, um, the biggest. So, but it it, it is um, Waterford. It covers Waterford, Avalon, um, Alafaya, Cody Four, Dean Road. A, um, a little bit, I don't think even a little bit of Livista stayed with me because I had up to Econ and now I don't have Econ, I don't have Chicasso. So it goes all the way down to Narcosi Road, Lake Nona, South Chase, Weatherby, Meadowwood, um, Pepper Mill, uh, Deerwood, uh, a little bit, a little corner of um, Hunter's Creek and a little bit of Young, Young Pine Way, wow. Parkway. But um, before I had it up to um, Florida Mall, now I only have it to Central um, Florida Parkway. And it's a huge district. <laughs> Tell people, educate people on what a com district, what a commissioner does, because I think a lot of people just see the ballot. Um, they don't know, they don't do research, uh, but and they don't know how important that election is. Uh, so tell them, give, give them an idea of what it is that a commissioner does. What do you do in your in your regular outings, and how 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 you make an impact in the community? Well, um, um, Ted, that's a very good question, and I love it because being an elected official, it doesn't matter what elected official you are. If you are there, you are to serve the people, to serve the community, the residents, the voters, the constituents. And what happens is that sometimes people tend to be elected and forget about that. But I always said it since day one that my bosses other people, other residents of District 4. So that's why I don't move unless they know what we're doing and what's going on over here. And I do a lot of meetings with individuals. And so that people, I'm telling you, residents in my district, they thought that, oh, well, you know, I cannot have a meeting, you know, with with public works, with the engineers, with the traffic engineers. And so no, and I bring all of them and the police officers and the sheriff and the uh, firefighters, and they have that meeting. That's, that's town hall meetings that I bring everybody in. So, you know, questions can be answered for the community as well, right? So saying that the commissioner, that's exactly what it, what it is, is a mediator between the local government, which is Orange County, with the residents. So that's why I have to go back to the resident before I make any decision over here in the county, but that's me. I don't know. I mean, I think other uh, commissioners does that, but I do that. Why? Because I have to. I have to do, or I have to let them know what I'm doing because I am here because they voted me in, right? And that's why. And I'm going to take advantage of this time to let you know that local government is more important than um, you know um, voting for a president because the president is not going to come and fix your road or fix your light or, or or pick your trash or you know fix the hole in the street or do you know drainage or something is the local government that's why it's important that you concentrate in the local government and i agree i think people feel like i feel like people don't understand how critical that is they uh they take it as just a fluff position and in reality you all are making changes in the communities you represent on a daily basis, you're listening to them. Um, and I think people want a voice, but they only want to go to the highest level. And my thing to people always is, but your local is where you can feel and see see the actual difference that uh, the correct and the right elected official can make in a community. Mm -hmm. 
it's important that um, I'm telling you, I, I have learned a lot. I have to say that I have learned a lot. I mean, it, my passion to serve and so is good, but I needed to learn the other side of, you know, politics and how things work and how you, you know, negotiate with developers, how you negotiate in the best interest of the community, because you have to think of the future as well, not only the time you're there, but what will happen when you're not there, yes. right? So it's a lot of uh, reading, thinking, the agenda that comes every other week that you have to read and discuss, you know, in, in a BCC, you know, that's um, constituents' money. So we, the payers, taxpayer money, so we need to be responsible for that as well. So it's a lot of work that I really enjoy and I have learned a lot. Really, I do. I'm I know still you, enjoy. You, you can't make up um, when I see you out, when I hear you talk about it, mm -hmm. you have a passion for it and you are a compassionate public servant, servant leader, uh, which is beautiful. And I love that you talk about your faith openly. You know, I do too. Um, I love that we're able to do that. Um, I'm a big proponent, obviously. Uh, what do you want to do uh, in the next four years? So election, tell them, first of all, when the election is um, and how that works a little bit. And then tell them what your vision is, what you'd like to try to accomplish in the next four years. OK, so right now, election day is August 23rd. That's the Tuesday, August 23rd. But um, early voting start in august 8th which is next monday wow. okay so you can go to any of the libraries or the community centers that are open that are um, um designated or, or assigned for early voting and then you can go and you know do your vote so that way when the election day comes the 23rd you don't have you know like something happened it's raining so i don't want to go you already did it and it's i mean it's going to start monday and it's all the way um before the election day, the Sunday before the election day, which is the 21st. And that, you know, they will close that day. They will close, uh, well, that day will be the last day for the early voting. That Monday, the 22nd, everything will be closed because they will be moving all those machines and so to different other prison to yes. put, you know, so you can go and vote on that Tuesday. So saying that, I have to say that you during this, this year, um, Ted, Something that I, I I did as an initiative from my office was to, to to deal with the small business. You know that I'm very passionate. I mean, I have my own small business, Henry, my husband. You know, and and that's important because that's a very good you know um, line of of um, economic in our in our this in our um, county. So I I developed this whole like networking thing. But is every month that we choose different. Um, business in Lake Nona and we get together and everybody have been, you know, like um, getting getting to know all these businesses that sometimes people don't know and, and they are there. And beside that, the purpose of it is not only to network and, and, and uh, we're friends. No, is I always bring or somebody from the county or from the city to um, bring information for them to be certified as a vendor in the county, in the city, so they can also um, you know, submit proposal and so and be part of, of the projects that the city and the county has for, for the business that sometimes they don't know. So that have been functioning very well. I mean, it, the business have been growing. It is it, amazing when you start, you know, learning and knowing other people. Well, that I, I have been doing. I have been, you know, working very close with the homeless, with the mental health, you know, uh, um, programs and the people, and uh, and bringing those services more to, you know, grassroots to the to the community. And I'm going to continue doing that, looking for the safety, you know, checking that we can all work together with the sheriff office and, and so uh, the safety of the, the people housing. You know, we have a big crisis right now going on with yeah. housing. So that's something that I'm going to continue working this new year. And I'm bringing a project, a very good project that I think you know about it because somebody told me that, you know, is your friend? I know, but I'm not going to say it yet. <laughs> but if not, it's, it's going to come soon. But um, yes, it's going to be a good, you know, for for housing and also continue working with mental health because that have been increasing very, very heavy, yes. you know, sustainability, more green. We need to, you know, take care of our, um, you know, good water. So environment. So yes, all of that is coming. It continue um, to, to be completed this, this next four years. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to have you back on the show. I love, I love to hear anybody talk about anything like this that they're passionate about. But I really love when we have an elected official 
who hasn't got burnout, who hasn't got jaded, who still has the same level of love and passion about what she's doing. Uh, so kudos to you. I think that's contagious. And that's what we need. We need an energetic voice, somebody who is really dedicated to making sure that he or she is the voice. And in your case, she is the voice and you are. People respond to you whenever I see you. Um, you're very uh, in touch with what's going on in your district uh, to a level that I think you don't see very often in elected officials. So kudos to you. I'm very happy to have you on the show. And I absolutely think that you are an amazing elected official and, of course, an amazing human being. All right, Commissioner Gomez Cordero. Commissioner Cordero, how do, how do they reach you? How do they find out more about you and your upcoming election and what you have going on in the community? Yes, as a commissioner, you can call me at 407-836-5881. 407-836-5881. That's my office number. You can call me anytime. I have my staff here. And I have to tell you that they are very, you know, caring as well. And they represent me very well because that's the the main point here is to answer your phone calls and try to help you with any you know issues that you have any concerns any question we are here if i don't have the answer i will look for it and i will um you know provide it to you but um that's what we're here for and then for the um campaigning well you can um email me at reelect gomez cordero at gmail.com reelect gomez cordero at gmail.com and through the uh, video here you can see also the website so that's um you know, my company, I'm excited. But you can reach me any, any time. Okay. And of course I'll tag you. I'll tag um, you so people can find you on social media. Thank you for coming on and sharing your passion and your, your vision. It's always a joy truly to have you on the show. You're a blessing to our community if you don't already know that, but uh, I'm thankful to have you here. I really am. Thank you, Ted. I love you so much and say hi to all your family. Well. I love you. Same. Say hi to Henry and all your family. Okay. Y'all get out and vote. Learn about your candidates. Find out what they do. Um, make an educated decision because local elections matter. All elections matter. Don't think that local elections won't impact you because they can. Uh, so get out, uh, find out more information. And of course, check out reelectmaribel44.com if you want to learn more about Commissioner Gomez Cordero's uh, commission hood. All right, guys, we're out. Thank you so much for being on the show. We'll see you guys later.